In this video, I will show you how you can set up Go in Visual Studio Code. By the way, if you want to master VS Code completely, then I'm planning to create multiple videos on VS Code. So go to our channel and you'll be having a playlist with the name Visual Studio Code and you can access all the videos one by one and you'll become master of Visual Studio Code. So without wasting much time, let's get started. To start with, we will download and install Go. For that, in your browser, just type download Go and the very first link you'll get is go.dev and if you go to this link, you have featured downloads under which based on your operating system, you can download the file. For example, in Windows, we have .msi file. In case of Mac, you have .pkg. In case of Linux, we have .tar.zz. So based on your operating system, you can download the file. I have Windows operating system. So I'll just click on this and I'll download this. So basically what I've done is just to save time, I have already downloaded this and I have already installed this. So it is a very simple process. You just have to click on next, 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 and it will be installed in your system. After that, you have to install VS code that is Visual Studio code. If you do not have it, go to a browser and in the URL, you have to type code.visualstudio.com or just search for download Visual Studio code and you'll get this particular link. So once you're here, just click on this download for Windows button. Okay. And since I'm having Windows, that is the reason I'm getting this particular option. If you are in other operating system like Mac or Linux, you can download from here. All right. So once you install VS Code, make sure that you will be having these four checkboxes and make sure to check these four checkboxes. Now, once you have done this, let me just close this. I'll just open VS Code. Now, first go to your extensions. So in VS Code, we have extensions and just in the search, you have to type go. And what you have to do is you have to install the extension, which will act as a gateway between the Go programming installer file and our Visual Studio code. So the very first one is this particular extension. And you see that it is maintained by Go team at Google. Just click on this install button. And once it is installed, it is always better to reload your VS code. For that, just give shift, control and P to open the command palette and just search for reload. And you see you have developer reload window. Just click on this particular option and your Visual Studio code will refresh automatically. Now, what you can do is, in my case, I have created a folder with the name for Go. So you can create any folder and you see here, what I'll do is first, let me just open this particular folder with VS Code. So I'll just open this folder in Visual Studio and let me just close this. So first, let me just close this Hello World Go program. And here, under this folder, I'll just click on this plus button to create a new file. And I'll just create a Hello World program. So I'll just give Hello World.go. So Go is the extension for Golang. Give enter. And what you have to do is you have to save this file first. So I'll just give control S and you see that at the bottom you have various options. So just click on this install all. Okay. So these are the tools which you need and just click on this install all. And again, you see here also, I can just click on this install all. And at the bottom, you see that there are different tools, which is getting installed. You just wait for some time. It is getting installed. And please note that the environment it is going to create is go path is C users train rule and go in your case, it will be your username. For example, let's say that if your name is Tom, it can be C colon users Tom and go. Now I'll just see whether all these are installed or not. And alternatively, what you can do is in the terminal, what you see is here, you have new terminal and you see in the new terminal also, you can have this, for example, you can run the program from here as well. Now, before that, I see that I have a problem here. So it says that go.mod file not found. So what I have to do is again, I'll just give shift control P in the command palette and I'll just say like go. So I'll just say like go update. Okay. 
So you see here, it says go install and update tools. So if you get this error, just click on this go install and update tools. And it says that all these tools are necessary. Just select all these tools, click OK. And now again, you see that there are a lot of tools which are getting installed. So just wait until it loads up properly. I mean, once these are installed properly. And now you see that at end, you have succeeded. You see here, it says lot of succeeded message. So you see that once all these tools are getting installed properly, you will get the success messages. So again, we have to wait further so that all these tools should get installed in a proper manner. And from here, it is saying that github.com and this particular tool is also getting installed. And you see that slowly it is installing all the tools. And once it is successful in installing all the tools, it will be saying that everything is finished. So I'll just wait until everything is finished. Now you see that further, it is installing different, different files, right? And these are important. Again, for everything it is showing as succeed. And if any failure is there, what you have to do is you have to just go to command palette and then you have to just give go update or install and you have to select all those files and then you have to just click on OK again. So this process is going to take some time. So have some patience and just wait until everything is finished. Now you see that it is showing as succeeded. And if I come up, if I just go to problems here, this is actually not a problem. I'll just show you if I write the code, this problem will go off. So I'll just say, for example, package, package main, and I'll just give here import FMT. And what I'll do is I'll just create a sample Hello World program. For this, I'll just give func and I'll just give main. So this is the function. And now I'll just give FMT dot. What I'll do is print. You see that this particular Visual Studio code is also giving me suggestion. So I'll just give println and I'll just say, for example, like, hello world. Now I'll just save it. So I'll just give control S. Okay. And let me just bring it down. And now what I can do is I can just go to terminal. And if you don't see terminal here, you can just go to terminal, click on new terminal. Okay. So here, once you have this terminal, what you can say is you can just say go run and name of the file. So it is hello world.go. Just give enter and you see it prints hello world at the bottom, right? So this is the way you can print hello world program. And also you see that if you don't want to give this particular command that is go run hello world.go, then there is an extension called runner. I'll just show you. So go to extensions and just type runner. And you see you have code runner and it is from June Han. Just click on this install button. I'll just give control shift P and I'll just click on this developer reload window. Just give enter and the VS code will be refreshed. You see that if I just click on this particular file and okay, let me just open my file. So it is this particular file, right? That is hello world.go. And now you see at the top, I have this option. So if I just click on this run code, you see, code runner gives me an option to run the code from here. So now it will take some time because it is running for the first time using this particular tool. And at the bottom, it says, hello world. Now, again, there is some problem if you want to accept user input. So the problem I'll just show you. So first I'll just create a file and I'll just give here the name as for example, user input dot go dot go is the extension for Golang. And now what I'll do is actually I have already created a file. I mean, I've already created a program. So I'll just paste it here and I'll just save it. And what I'm going to do here is you see it is saving this particular program and you see this particular program accepts user input that is enter first name. So you can give your first name and then last name and it will show the full name, which is first name plus last name. Now the issue here is that if I just run it, let me just run it. If I run it from the particular code runner, you see if I just come up. Now if I just go to terminal, now you see that it is not running in terminal, rather it is running in output. 
So basically it should run in terminal. And to fix this first, I'll just go to files. Then I'll just go to preferences. And I'll just go to, I should be having settings, right? So I have settings. Now I have to just type in run in terminal. Okay, let me just give a space here. And if I just come down, I should be having this particular option, run in terminal. So I think it should be here. Yeah, you see, I have code runner run in terminal. So my code runner will run in terminal rather running in the output because output is read only and terminal is the place where we can give the user input. So just close this, just come here. Just click this close button for settings. And now what I'll do is if I just click on this particular code runner that is run code, just wait for some time. I think it is showing that code is already running. So it is better. What we'll do is we'll just refresh this VS code again. So I'll just refresh it. So reload window. And now what I'll do is first, let me just bring this terminal a bit down. Okay. And I have this particular program. Just click on this run button. So run code. And again, it is not running in the terminal. So what I'll do is again, I'll just go to file, go to preferences. I'll just share with you that the kind of problems you might also face. So I'll just go to settings and here I have extensions. You see, I have run code configuration. You see, it is showing like run in terminal. So by mistake, if it is not checked, so at this moment it is already checked. So you see that it is not checked, but if it is already checked, then it is fine. Otherwise, you please check this particular option and then close this settings and again, save your file and again refresh it. So what I'll do is I'll just give control shift and then P and I'll just give reload window. And now what I'll do is I'll just run this program again. So you might also face this issues and I'm just showing you how to debug this. And you see it says enter first name. So I can just give for example Sandeep. It says enter last name. So I'll just give Kumar. And it says the full name is Sandeep Kumar. So you see that if I don't do these settings, you see first, the previous problem was that the code was giving me the output here. So I was not able to type here because this particular output is read only and terminal is the place where you can provide your input. So for that purpose, what we have done is we have gone to files and then we have gone to preferences, settings. And if you're using code runner, then you have to just give run in or what you can do is you can just search for code runner. You see it is showing like code runner run in terminal. So make sure that this is checked in and alternatively what you can do is first let me just close this and you can just go to extensions. You have to just come to run code configuration. You have to check the option. So the option I had already shared with you that is run in terminal, make sure that this is checked in so that the output will be running in the terminal and you can provide the user input in the terminal. So that's it in this video. I have shared even the debugging part with you so that you do not face any issues. So if you'd like the video, please hit on the like button and do subscribe to our channel. And you know that I also have some premium courses for which if you subscribe to our channel, and if you are following properly, then I will be giving you a coupon code using which if you enroll in the course, that means the premium paid course, that course will become free for you. So that particular coupon code is only available for the first thousand students. And even though, let's say that if you subscribe to the channel later on and you still want to access the coupon code, then I will provide another set of coupon code that will make the particular course pricing extremely less. So make sure you check the description of this video and I will be having the complete HTML tutorial course, CSS tutorial course, then Python course and so on so that you can access those course for free. And if you want to access the paid course, then you can go to our website, which is in the description and you can access the premium course and you'll not see those type of course anywhere else in internet. So take care and I'll see you in the next video till then. Bye.
Close till I get up Time is barely on our side 